Hi everybody, welcome back to Meet the Maskies, Katie here. And I am here to provide you with another update on my Tarlov cyst disease journey because I think my last video was at the four month mark and next week I will be hitting six months post surgery for Tarlov cysts. And it's kind of huge. So I recently had somebody reach out asking me for an update. I figured it is beyond time and um, yeah, this week is actually quite interesting. So after almost three years of running and hiding and dodging, I came down with COVID this past week. And the only reason I'm sharing that is because I do feel like it kind of plays a little bit of a factor in this whole journey. So I started having some body aches and a fever and my test like my at home test came back negative but what i was interested in at the time was my pain like you know when you just when you have a fever you have all those body aches and all of that whatever but i was having a lot of my pain concentrated in my surgery site area and like all my low back and i literally after my test came back negative the first time I was starting to worry like, do I have some sort of like bacterial infection happening in my surgery site? Like in that area where they removed some of my sacrum bone and replaced it? Like, oh my gosh, is this what's happening? I'm having like an infection and this is where your mind goes, right? So finally the next day, the like horrible sore throat came and I took another test and it was positive. So I was actually a little bit relieved that that's what it was. I know that sounds really strange to say that, um, but I think if it had it been a, some sort of infection in my surgery area, that would have been a lot worse. I had all of the mild symptoms. So the body aches, the fever, the sore throat. Um, and now I'm just kind of getting some of that fatigue, but I'm doing much, much better. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better. Um, so that was just an interesting post-surgery getting COVID weirdness. Um, was that just a lot of the body aches that I was having was kind of concentrated in that low back area. Um, I used my ice machine. I, that helped, I think, with the fever as well. But, um, but I'm, doing, I'm doing really good. I'm doing good. So back to my journey with this disease and being almost six months post-op. I actually just got a phone call from Dr. Fagenbaum's office. I think the last time I updated you, I hadn't talked to him yet since my... Um, three month MRI was sent in. I have obviously since spoken to him, to his office I should say, and everything was good. He was in agreement with what the radiologist um, before had looked at my results and said that the cysts were no longer present, that everything was healing exactly like he was expecting and as it should, so that was all good. I just got a phone call from Dr. Fagenbaum's office looking for my six month survey. Um, it's due next week. So she just kind of called and said, you know, feel free to go ahead and complete it and send it to us now. Um, so I have to do that. And the surveys are, I think three months, six months, I think nine months, 12 months, and then two years, I believe. I have to go back and look at my folder of all of the surveys, but they're basically just a questionnaire that you, share your symptoms and what you've been experiencing over that like three month period, now the six month period. Um, so it's kind of just taking what I'm doing here and putting it on paper and then sending it to the office for them to review and visit and, and whatnot. So I can say in my, in my six month surgery, post-surgery update that I'm doing really, really well. All of those little kind of aches and pains and I think I was calling them discomfort in the last video, are gone, really. I don't have any pain or any discomfort in my low back. I still can't like lay completely flat on a hard surface or I have to kind of watch when, you know, I put my purse on my back that I don't swing it around and like hit myself in the low back area or whatnot. Um, so that is definitely still life, you know, making sure that I'm protecting that kind of low back tailbone area. I always get a little nervous when I see kids and they, you know, they want to hug you right around your like waist area. Um, but all has been well and I don't have any of the discomfort. I don't really have any 
pain at all. Um, the bladder kind of issues where I was just feeling that feeling of fullness, whatnot, completely gone. I don't have any of those problems anymore. If anything, you know, I'm, I may just be pushing myself a little bit and then I, I feel it, but I'm also 41 and, you know, sometimes we do that in life in general, but even for somebody that's, you know, post-surgery, post-spinal surgery, you're testing the waters and figuring things out. And um, I know last video I was talking about doing a couch to 5K, I'm still in that training. This week it hasn't been so well being sick, but I'm hoping to get back to that next week, get back on track. I think I was at my six week mark in my, my couch to 5K training. And so I need to pick back up on that just because I, I had a busy week leading up to um, getting COVID and then I got COVID and then this past week has been uh, just rest is what you know I've been doing this past week. But I did get out for a nice walk yesterday um, through the neighborhood to get some fresh air. I'm doing that again today. So I'm getting back on track. I'm hopefully this, you know, COVID fatigue kind of feeling goes away sooner than later. I know that's a whole nother ball game, but um, I'm actually not feeling too, too bad. I'm not feeling too tired. Um, just a little bit more than I would say normal. And so I'm just going to hope that that goes away soon. But, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Really, I don't have too much to update. Um, but I do have some really exciting news and I'm hoping, so here's what I'm hoping that I can do with this channel is kind of turn it into talking to other people with this disease. I'm going to use an app where I kind of like a zoom where I can do an interview, bring somebody else into the conversation. So you're not just listening to me talk. And I want to share more people's stories because people have different experiences than I do. And I, if I don't know, I just want to share more of that because I feel like this channel, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me because of these videos. They find me on, you know, you find me on Instagram or you even message me here. And I appreciate that. I'm, I'm so glad that these videos are providing hope and inspiration for people, but I really want you to hear from other people too. So that's kind of a goal that I have is I'm, I'm looking at maybe doing some interviews, chatting with some other people that are willing to get on and chat with me and share their story and maybe some things that they've been doing to help cope or, you know, what their surgery was like or all of that. So that's kind of a goal, but Something else I've been working on is um, Kim, who is another sister, that's what we call each other, um, uh, sisters and misters. So she is another Tarlov cyst disease um, patient and sufferer, warrior, whatever you want to call us. And she is getting ready to have her surgery. So I'm going to let her, I'm not going to share her last name or anything. I'll let her, hopefully I'll be able to catch up with her and do an interview. But she and I are working on creating Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness Day. And what that means is, you know, there's like a day for everything. There's a national pizza eating day or what? There's like the most random days. Um, chocolate peanut butter lovers day. There are days for a lot of diseases. And, you know, there's days where you can use social media or use that day to really share maybe it's like breast cancer awareness month or um there's you know rare disease day so what we wanted to do was create an actual tarlov cyst disease awareness day and one way that we can do that is by um, state proclamations so we put an, an ask out there in the facebook group for other tarlov cyst disease warriors to sign up to submit a proclamation to their own state but we're looking at May 16th, 2023 as the first official Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness Day. And we've got, I think we've got about 20 or 25 states already, um, people from those states that are willing to submit a proclamation. So I don't want to say we have those states on board yet because proclamation requests usually need to be submitted a month to six weeks to eight weeks prior. So we're kind of not there yet. But if you're interested in helping us with that, message me, comment here on here, and I will share the link. I'll actually put the link into the description anyways. But um, the goal is to get some states to recognize Tarlov cyst disease. 
the thousands of us that suffer with this, that live with this, that have been treated for this, all of that, and to just create this one day where people can feel like they can share on social media or you know talk to friends and family, talk to maybe some elected officials and talk about this and educate others and validate others' feelings and validate their own feelings. And um, we chose May 16th because um, Dr. Tarlov that actually found the this these cysts and this disease, he is the original founder of them. Um, that is his birthday is May 16th. So we thought it was a really good way to pay tribute to him putting us on the map and um, helping those doctors like Dr. Fagenbaum um, that are out there that have devoted their practice to helping patients like us. And it's because of those doctors and their advancements that have given many of us the relief that we now have, um, and me especially because of having the surgery. So Tarlov's Cyst Disease Awareness Day, be on the lookout for it. I really wanna um, bring Kim on to a conversation so that we can talk about it and share our whys and what we're doing to um, create this and to really help um, you know, spearhead this movement. But that is something that I've been working on and really just, you know, talking with other people. I've connected with so many of you over the globe and I'm so grateful and I love all of your messages. And um, I appreciate that you watch these videos and that you find um, them to be helpful. So thank you and stay tuned. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get this going where I can bring other people into the conversation and hopefully share more and just just have more conversation about this. I know it's not something we necessarily all love talking about, but I feel like the more we talk about it, the more people will understand it, the more people will feel validated and maybe more doctors will get on board with, um, you know, really understanding this disease and believing it because that's part of the struggle. I know if you have this, you know. So that's my update, six months. Post surgery for Tarlov Sis, I'm doing really, really well and I'm moving and grooving, making plans for the future and doing a lot of advocating as best as I can to put this on the map so that these struggles that we all have, you know, hopefully we won't have to worry about in the future and we can get the proper help and treatment that we all need. So drop your comments in and let me know um, your thoughts. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in again. Bye, everybody.